So now continuing our initial discussion on linked genes, we've previously established these facts over here. Well, I think this is going to be really driven home. A much better way to understand this is if we compare linked versus unlinked genes. Okay, so let's write this down on the side over here and leave a good amount of space for this. Let's do comparison of linked versus unlinked. We'll say linked versus unlinked. And there's one key thing I want you to note is that when I say unlinked in this situation, you can even put a caret and say on in parentheses completely unlinked because there's actually a difference between partially uh, unlinked and completely unlinked, which we'll actually establish a little bit later. But we're going to say linked versus completely unlinked genes. What is the difference? So how are we going to do this comparison? This comparison is going to be done through a dihybrid cross and we're going to look at the results of that dihybrid cross. This is why it's so important to understand Mendelian genetics in order to see the deviations from such um, Mendelian laws. So what I'm going to have is uh, on one side I'm going to write unlinked and this is going to be on the other side I'm going to just put a line over here and of course on this side I'm going to write linked. And what I'm going to write over here just to remind myself is C-O-M-P, meaning completely linked. Okay, And we're going to divide these right across like this. So a little bit of difference between both of these. Let's imagine we have a parent generation. And in this parent generation, I'm going to do the classic capital, capital, cross with lowercase, lowercase, like this. So you should be very familiar with these crosses by now. You should already know what the parental gametes, of course, will be. So let's write PG for parental gametes. The parental gametes are going to be one half A and B. Let's imagine this is dad. Dad can donate capital A and capital B. What about mom? In mom, on the right side, mom can donate, and that's why she has half of A and B. Half and half will combine to give you a whole, and that will be the offspring, the actual F1 individual. So let's write down the F1 possibility. There's only one possibility in the F1 if this is our parent cross. You should be very comfortable with this, and you should be able to know that every single offspring will be this genotype. Capital A, lowercase a, capital B, lowercase b, because of the parent's genotypes seen here. Now, what about the F1 gametes? Let's talk about them. Now we have a bit of variation in the F1 gametes because look, these are our, all of our F1 individuals. Their gametes can look like this. We're going to have one-fourth of their gametes being A, capital, capital A, and capital B. Another fourth of them are going to be capital A and lowercase b. Another one-fourth is going to be lowercase a, capital B. And lastly, one final one-fourth will be lowercase a, lowercase b. It's very simple how I did this. In order to figure out the gametes, I did every single combination of the genotypes because all you have to do is get pick two. That's what I'm basically saying here. Whenever you're thinking of gametes, you have to cut it in half. There are four possible genes. There are four possible alleles. I can only pick two to create a gamete because a gamete is haploid, half. So I'm going to pick two. I picked capital and capital, then I picked capital and lowercase, then I picked a lowercase and capital, and then lowercase, lowercase. That's just the basic probability of the F1 gametes. So what have we established here? What I'm going to tell you right now is that this, all of this that's said over here, this is all in relation to unlinked genes. Remember, the title of this flowchart is linked genes. Linked is where it's going to get weird. So what we're going to say about this, which should be pretty clear, should be pretty repetitive from what we've already learned, is that this is normal. And because it's normal, I'll also say that this is classic Mendelian genetics right here. We'll say normal and Mendelian. Now let's get to the linked side, completely linked specifically. Let's imagine I have, uh, I'm going to say not A and B for just purposes of difference, okay, so that we get used to it. What I'm going to say is that linked genes in this sense, are going to be completely linked, meaning that they're going to be so close to each other, two new alleles that I'll say are so close that they're inherited as one. Write that down as a side note to keep that in your head. Inherited as one. Keep this fact in your head as we move forward. So close, they're physically so close to each other on the chromosome, they're completely linked, and thus their tendency to be inherited together is pretty high. Let's see what we mean by that. 
Let's imagine I have this as my parent generation. I have dad who is capital D, capital D with capital E and capital E. And who do you think he's going to cross with? Of course, mom. And mom is going to be lowercase all around. This is a classic beginning of the dihybrid cross. This will give me parental gametes. Our parental gametes are very much similar to our parental gametes on our unlinked side, just different letters. So you should be comfortable in knowing that this would be one half, capital D, lower, uh, and capital E for dad, if we imagine that's dad, and then let's say mom would be one half lowercase all around, or lowercase d and lowercase e, because we have to pick two. We have to go haploid because it's a gamete. So I'm going to pick two. I only have one possibility. I can only have one possible combination, capital D and capital E. I can pick two out of these for the mom, lowercase, lowercase is my possibility. And our F1 will then be all, just like in our unlinked situation, will be all capital D, lowercase d, and capital E, lowercase e. So, you might be wondering, where is the weirdness? Where do you see this linkedness if everything is matching up exactly except for difference in letters right now? Well, what I'm going to tell you is that there's going to be a big, big difference in the sense that there's going to be this final sort of rule. The F1 is going to have all of its offspring be this genotype. But I'm going to tell you that the F1 gametes... Unlike the F1 gametes here, which are nice and evenly spread out. Remember I said just pick two out of this genotype. I can do the same thing here, but, but, here's our but. The F1 gametes end up only showing as one half capital D, capital E, and one half lowercase d and lowercase e. Now, why did this happen? This happened, and let's actually put like sort of a line here to sort of ask ourselves a question. Let's ask ourselves why. Why did this happen? I want you to remember that these are completely linked. D and E are completely linked, meaning that, and I'm going to write this on the side over here, no matter what, capital D will be completely linked to capital E and will always stay with each other. Conversely, lowercase d will be always completely linked to lowercase e and will always stay with each other. For this reason, we have the exact same gametes in F1 as we do in the parent generation. As you can see, they are exactly the same because of the complete linkage of capital D with capital E and lowercase d with lowercase e. This is something that's seen on this chromosome. Let's imagine that this is a chromosome right here. I'm going to draw a chromosome just like this. This is my chromosome. Draw another chromosome right over here. Very bad chromosome, but they're always so close to each other on this chromosome that they're always linked and inherited together as one. Why? Let's answer this question now. I'm going to write this down as capital D and capital E plus its opposite, lowercase d, lowercase e, always travel together. This is why they're considered completely linked. This is why I wrote completely many times already. I'll always, let's say, travel together. They never separate. They do not follow this independent assortment that Mendel spoke about. They never separate because they are, let's write this down, never, I'll write SEP for separate, because they are, and I'm going to write this down in big letters, linked. There's that key. That should be a click in your head. That's why they're called linked genes. In addition, what I want you to understand, and I've already sort of mentioned this, is that only two F1 gametes, only two F1 gametes um, that are the same as parent generations, as let's say that are same as P gametes uh, will form due to linkage, will form due to linkage. As you can see, 
This one matches up directly with that one. This one matches up directly with that one. Here we have some variation. We have some difference. We have two new guys that don't look like their parents' gametes because they're complete. These guys are not completely linked. They're unlinked. They're absolutely unlinked. So they follow the independent assortment law. Thus, you have more probability and more chance for these um, different things. Over here, we have the same parent gametes and F1 gametes because of linkage. And I will finally want to conclude by stating that because we call this normal and Mendelian, I'm going to call this from this point forward and get used to this terminology. Let's say weird and non-Mendelian. Weird plus non-Mendelian. That's how we'll describe anything that deviates from Mendel's laws. And this is because, and I'm going to just write this over here since we don't have space, because they are, they as in the chromosomes, are not acting what independently they are violating that law that Mendel established and because they're violating it they're weird and they're non-Mendelian thus we have linked genes so overall hopefully you have a better understanding of linked genes let's make sure we understand that this is all because chromosomes are inherited as a unit and through this linkage process we get different results than what we expect in the unlinked process we're going to start seeing now incomplete linkage and how that relates because we have unlinked we have completely linked there's also an intermediate possible we're going to talk about that as we move forward with the lecture series